Hello, colleagues. Thanks for joining. We will wait uh, a couple more minutes because we know we have many people registered. So thanks for coming on time. We'll start soon. Okay, I think we'll get started. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of the participants on today's webinar. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we would like to warmly welcome all of you uh, to the presentation of UNFPA's new guidance on how to design and set up cash assistance within GBV case management. My name is Joanna Friedman. I'm the Cash and Voucher Assistance Team Lead for UNFPA based in our Geneva Humanitarian Response Division. And it's my pleasure to be your moderator today. So we'll go through a couple of items of housekeeping. We have uh, slotted this webinar in for one hour in your calendars, but we are hoping to uh, keep it to 30 to 45 minutes, knowing just how busy a time this is for, for all of you. So thank you so much for joining as well and for taking the time. Um, we're really excited to share this guidance and we'll be sharing the link to the resource at the end of the webinar and through a follow-up email as well. So you will have access to it very soon, don't worry. If you have any questions afterwards, you can email our uh, UNFPA cash team email that we will also provide to you at the end. And we'll have it on a reminder, as a reminder on our last slide too. So I will present the panelists uh, first, and then I will turn to our guest speaker from the U.S. Bureau for Population, Refugees, and Migration. And this will be followed by a brief overview of our approach to cash assistance in GBV case management, and we'll present the guidance to you. We have cash, our cash team here on the line, as well as country colleagues from two different contexts who will showcase the contextualization of this guidance and its related tools and also tell you about what they've learned from applying it in their field context. So I'll start by presenting our speakers. We have a number of UNFPA colleagues who will be presenting the guidance today and its application. So we have Adi Skole, who is our regional cash and voucher assistance specialist for the Asia Pacific and Latin America region. We have Elena Bertola, our CVA specialist, regional CVA specialist for our Arab states region. We have Eleonora Argenti, who is our GBV and CBA program officer. We have Diana Saria, who is the GBV coordinator for UNFPA Colombia. And Sahar Nache, who is our program associate for gender with UNFPA Palestine. So thank you so much, colleagues. We've also engaged with many, many more CASH and GBV colleagues over the past two years, including our roving and regional GBV specialists and our country GBV specialists. And what we're showing you today could not have been possible without their input. So for those on the line, we thank you very much. And we would also like to give a special thanks to US PPRM, Denmark, and the Swiss Cooperation and Development Agency, who've supported this initiative and its foundation since the very beginning. So I would now like to give the floor and introduce Diane Boulay, who's with me here from the US Bureau of Population, Refugees, and Migration. Diane is the Humanitarian Affairs Program Specialist of the U.S. Mission to the UN and other international organizations here in Geneva. So thanks so much to PRM for funding this work and over to you, Diane. Thank you, Joanna. Hello to all. Thank you for inviting me to provide remarks on behalf of PRM, our Humanitarian Bureau within the U.S. State Department. 
for this very important launch event. I also would like to thank UNFPA for its strong leadership on preventing and responding to gender-based violence in emergency situations. The United States is supportive of cash assistance as a dignified, discreet, and flexible way to help survivors escape violent relationships, seek emergency services, and secure a temporary shelter. Such assistance helps women and girls make their own choices about their health and safety. The potential transformative power of using cash and voucher assistance as a tool in GBV prevention and response is clear. If implemented with proper planning and precautions, it can be an effective way to provide an enormous boost within GBV case management. It can support women's agency and have a positive psychosocial impact, specifically when delivered alongside protection interventions. Through the individualized nature of this support, we see concrete advantages in addressing the unique needs of women and girls and in changing their lives. Indeed, it can be very life-saving, removing financial barriers to access life-saving care, as well as a key to recovery by getting GBV survivors back on their feet, helping them on a path to economic independence and preventing falling back into negative coping mechanisms or avoiding a return to a male perpetrator of violence. Through the US government's Safe From the Start flagship initiative, we have been supporting UNFPA's innovative efforts to integrate CVA within case management services for GBV survivors. The goal of Safe From the Start and our recently expanded version called Safe From the Start Revisioned is to protect all individuals from all forms and threats of GBV in emergencies. The initiative supports innovation and best practices for life-saving services and calls on everyone in the humanitarian community to take collective action to prioritize GBV from the onset of every response. The provision of cash in GBV case management is a great example of continued progress in this direction. We commend UNFPA teams and the local women leaders with whom it works on breaking new ground in this area and we are proud to collaborate with UNFPA on this effort. However, cash and voucher assistance alone cannot address all protection needs or guarantee access to local education or social support systems. Our shared challenge is how to better support humanitarians to consider individual and local contexts and preferences in order to most effectively weave CVA into GBV programming. We must also continue to break down the silos between protection and cash actors, using the evidence base to generate even greater synergies to integrate this modality into GBV programs. And Joanna and I noticed that there were some, some both uh, GBV and cash expertise on the line, so that is really great to see. And that is why I'm particularly delighted today to participate in the global launch and hear from colleagues in Colombia and Palestine illustrating the power of collaboration and the importance of making significant gains in the GBV and cash sectors. We are very glad to see UNFP consolidating its field programming approach and develop a comprehensive framework or guide that standardize this approach to ensure quality. This will be beneficial to all actors working on GBV programming, and this includes local and women-led organization partners, as well as GBV, AOR partners and members. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Diane, uh, for this reminder about how cash assistance can really be a catalyst for impact within our GBV response programming. And thank you again for the key support from the US uh, in terms of providing women and girls affected by conflict and displacement with, with options. So it's really a pleasure to be here today. Exactly one year ago, we uh, presented some of our field learning around this approach. And now one year later, we're looking at how to standardize it. So we're, we're really um, excited to be able to say that we've integrated cash assistance into our GBV response programming over the past few years in quite an exponential way. So from just a few country offices in 2021, as you can see on the map here, we now have 16 country offices who have really um, dove into this implementation over the past few years um, across three regions, and this in continues to increase. And we know that there are many partners and other uh, organizations out there who are looking to do the same. So we really want to also acknowledge uh, the work on which this guidance is, is based, which is from UNFPA and from other 
uh, organizations as well in these two communities of practice that Diane mentioned. Um, so we're really acknowledging that work and the previous protocols that are out there for GBB caseworkers, the CBA and GBB compendium, these other pieces of guidance. Um, what was missing was a really comprehensive guidance on how to very practically assess design and integrate the cash assistance into GBV case management from the perspective of both GBV and cash experts. So we've had this demand from the field, many, many requests from our field offices, partners, um, and other actors from these communities of practice on having a more detailed how-to. We're not doing this based on assumptions. We're trying to build evidence of what works. So we've piloted We've scaled up, we've learned, and we've been building evidence through regular programmatic monitoring, as well as evaluation studies with the Johns Hopkins University Center for Humanitarian Health. So you'll hear about that as well a little bit later from Colombia. And then we're looking to consolidate that learning and roll out what works. So on a country to country basis, we've addressed questions, we've discussed with country colleagues how to find solutions, and we've cross shared experiences from one implementing office to another. We produced a multi-country case study as well as a specific case study about this approach in Lebanon. And both of these you can find on the CALP and the GBV AOR websites. So we've really tried to do this in a very bottom-up sort of way in terms of our learning. And that's what this guidance is based upon. Uh, and this is how we're coming to this kind of standard approach. So I'd like to hand over now to my colleagues who've been working very closely with the country offices and have developed this guidance on cash and GBV case management. So. Over to you. Thank you so much, Joanna. And again, good morning and good evening, colleagues. Thank you for joining us today. We are very proud, as uh, my colleague said, to share with you this new guidance. Uh, my name is Eliana Argenti, and together with my colleagues, Alice Colley and Elena Bertola, we consolidated and expanded the feedback that we received from both the GBV and cash practitioners in order to develop this new guidance that we are presenting today. So as Joanna just said, it was a really a joint GBV and cash effort aiming to bridge the GBV and CVA communities of practice. The guidance presents the main building blocks and logic that is behind a correct and safe implementation of cash in GBV case management. Uh, you can see on the slide is structure and the tools that actually we developed. Um, in a way that user actually can easily implement them and directly contextualize in their own programming in their own context. Uh, aside from its very comprehensive nature, the guidance includes important additions and consideration on, on the topic. Uh, for example, we list all the essential elements that needs to be in place as necessary precondition that are key to understanding whether cash is a feasible option in a given context. Also, we provide a clear framework on how to integrate, for example, consideration on confidentiality, uh, role-based access to the referral process, delivery and monitoring of cash assistance to GBV survivors. In a nutshell, uh, the instructions and recommendations accompany CBA and GBV teams from the design to the setup of the implementation of cash in GBV case management programming. But we also receive a last chapter for tips that are particularly reserved for GBV case workers and managers that are working directly with survivors. In fact, we mirror the GBV case management process and we provide focused considerations that are actually necessary at each single step of the case management, which we find very, very useful for, for teams. Uh, thanks to this guidance, uh, GBV practitioner will learn how to consider, adopt and distinguish a suitable delivery mechanism, how to calculate amounts and how to decide the frequency and duration of cash assistance based on the context and, of course, the case, always keeping in mind the survivor-centered approach. Based on our field experience and evidence, uh, we are sure that the guidance framework will enhance the use of cash as an essential uh, tool in GBV case management process and will be a key to maximize the positive outcomes for GBV survivors and women and girls at risk of GBV. Uh, but now I turn to my colleague, Elena. You are a regional CVA specialist for the Arab States region. Uh, what was the demand from the field? 
Thank you, Eleonora. This has been uh, quite a learning journey for, for all the pioneers of this approach uh, and, and for us and uh, as advisors. So when we started working on the approach more than two years ago, hand in hand with the field teams and the implementing partner, the situation was similar across. So we knew that cash in GBV case management was not like other type of cash. And we knew more or less how to give the cash out, but how to design this cash approach in a comprehensive way, how to target in such a sensitive setting. What were the criteria? What do we expect? How much would we give? How would we mitigate the risk? And so on. So through a very close consultation with our implementing partners, the potential beneficiaries, and our GBV colleagues, we started framing the approach. First of all, we discovered how difficult it really was for practitioner to define what the cash was for in the frame of case management. The concept of basic needs that was introduced about 10 years ago really entered the common language. So to shift from the MPCA outcome of covering basic needs to actually mitigating and responding to GBV consequences requires a logic shift. GBV survivors are still going to use the cash to access basic needs, such as food, rent, transport, services, but that's the immediate result. The goal is that accessing those needs and services through the cash they've received translates into individual GBV risk mitigation or response to GBV consequences. My colleague Sahar from Palestine Country Office will talk more about how they actually use the guidance and the response framework to unpack this. Another element of the guidance that I think it will be really useful is the approach to the selection of the different delivery mechanism. It is very different to plan and deliver cash to a GBV survivors compared to a beneficiary in a regular cash program. There are various considerations to take into account that we might not be so familiar with, or at least I wasn't. If we look at it from the perspective of a GBV case manager and we put ourselves in the shoes of a GBV survivor, we would ask, would someone notice me at the money agent office and ask why I'm receiving the money? Or where would I keep the money safe when I'm home to hide from my perpetrator? What if the finance officer at the Women Girls Safe, Safe, Safe Space shares my name with the community leader? On the other hand, GBV practitioners are not so familiar with all aspects of the different delivery mechanism. While we know that some delivery mechanism can indeed specifically support risk mitigation in terms of confidentiality, familiarity, and discretion. In the guidance, we also provide specific tips on how to use post-distribution monitoring tools in the framework of case management. Cash in GBV case management is mostly unpredictable. Does the sample and frequency of monitoring need to be flexible and adjusted constantly as the cash is tailored to the GBV survivor's need not to our distribution plan. And only GBV staff, mainly case workers and case worker supervisor can actually implement the PDM um, surveys with the survivors. And we cannot rely on enumerator or meal staff, which adds on the case manager task and time. And this needs to be factored in. So I have a question for Alice now, which is also a colleague in the cash, uh, uh, in the cash uh, unit. So did you know that conducting focus group discussion with GBV survivors is a no-go? No, um, I didn't know when I first started working on this type of programming. Um, it's not so intuitive for those who are not familiar with GBV case management. And I had to learn this, realize that while focus group discussions with recipients are part of the activities, they can be seen as regular by some cash experts and others it can actually put GBV survivors at risk and betray principles of confidentiality. However, of course, as part of the monitoring, for instance, you can still have focus group discussions with the GBV caseworkers to discuss challenges and lessons learned and inform the continuous improvement of the program. So it's really about understanding what to do and not to do and adjusting our ways of working. Thank you, Alice. So you have the same background, the cash background that, uh, that I have. What are uh, your key reflections and takeaways on the guidance that can be useful to GBV, cash, and all other involved uh, uh, colleagues in this type of programming? 
So uh, among the tools we're sharing today, there is the response framework, which is key for GBV specialists, cash specialists, and other program colleagues to understand together when cash would be relevant and how it can contribute to enhance safety and maximize positive GBV outcomes. This framework then helps define how the cash assistance should best look like to support the needs of the GBV survivors. Since we're talking about smaller scale, about a case-by-case -case approach, really focusing on quality, then we might need to work with cash amounts, duration, and timing of the cash delivery that are tailored to the different scenarios and individuals. Here we're talking about being able to disperse cash in less than a day if needed, otherwise a survivor is not able to access life-saving medical care or ends up sleeping in the street with her children. In the humanitarian community, we always say cash assistance is a tool that gives a lot of flexibility to help reach program objectives, but it's really uh, for me in GBV case management that I've been able to witness this at its most. Um, in this guidance, we also really try to clarify throughout the whole process of designing the cash assistance and integrating it into case management, what are the roles and responsibilities between the GBV specialists, the cash focal points, and others who may be involved at program level in the country. And it was really about finding ways to make the process comfortable for everyone. Um, because to make the delivery of the cash assistance happen, we almost inevitably include new parties who can be partners with no GBV experience and financial service providers. And we need to know exactly how to preserve confidentiality along the delivery process while still making the cash delivery happen. Um, and internally, the limits in the roles and information that a, a CVA focal point or a finance officer accesses, for instance, also needs to be very clear. Um, so we, we built uh, the different parts of this guidance based on the experience and work we did with our field colleagues, as, as uh, my colleagues mentioned. And it is so useful to have it at hand in the field if you have a doubt and you can easily navigate to the section you need. It now provides us with a clear and complete framework for safe and efficient implementation of cash and GBV case management and I personally just wish we had it when I started with the UNFPA. Um, now we would like to give enough time to our colleagues to present their side of the story and their field experience. Um, and so we'll start with Palestine, with Sahar, Program Associate Gender for UNFPA Palestine. Sahar, um, you have started providing cash for GBV in the context of COVID-19 before the UNFPA approach and guidance was developed. How have the examples from other country offices and the guidance in time helped you reframe the approach of cash and GBV case management in Palestine? Over to you, Sahar. Um, thank you, Alice, for the question. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Sahar, uh, cash focal point for Palestine CO. Uh, in fact, as you have mentioned, uh, UNFPA Palestine uh, started CBA for GBV in the context of, GB, of COVID-19 with the purpose of supporting GBV survivors and women at risk of GBV meeting their non-food and food, uh, food needs as a manner to decrease tension and violence in the household. That was an additional trigger to GBV as reported by our assessment. After that, you know, the situation had evolved. And we realized that a GBV could be a powerful tool and appropriate tool also to mitigate GBV risk beyond COVID response. So in this regard, we start learning and studying the context and we conduct, uh, and therefore we have conducted G GBV risk assessment and post distribution monitoring to evaluate whether the CBA had posed any additional risk to the woman we are serving and we learned that no, if, if it's done within a well coordination between cash and cash uh, and case management approach. So, in, so also we have reached out our expert colleague and conducted learning session with our staff and uh, implementing partner uh, to uh, better understand and to build a shared understanding of the GBV situation addressed by partner through GBV case management. 
The mitigation linked to this to the specific context, partner capacity, as well as to our uh, UNFPA GBV team in managing the program. So based on this experience and also the partner experience, we build the response framework and identify the specific GBV situation where cash could be, first of all, relevant to the context and uh, provide assistance to, uh, assistance to the uh, GBV and uh, also save at the same time and where it would not. So to be honest, it wasn't an easy exercise, uh, given that economic uh, and also political situation uh, is deterioration in, in Palestine. And this is like, uh, uh, at the same time, contributing uh, to the uh, to factor to GBV. So we came up with this very specific situation and response where cash would be support the survivor. First of all, in, in different scenario, uh, such as a cash assistant could allow the survivor to start over her life and they allocate safer accommodation either independently or within safety network. And another, another scenario could be that cash assistant could mitigate factor to reduce tension and violence that occur when the scarcity of resources in additional to IBV trigger within the household. And also, cash assistance could be a, could support well the GBV survivor through providing resources to access specialized services linked to the survivor action plan, such as a specialized visit to mental to mental mental health support, legal documentation, medication, and also for legal representation at court, and also transportation. So all these scenarios. Could be uh, could be uh, set as a criteria for selecting a GBV survivor, and to make it uh, more durable, and and uh, we have developed a SOP to guide caseworker in the field, and to state all the scenarios, and also determine the amount, frequency, and duration of the assistance. And also this SOP is equipped with all the tools required for caseworker to start implementing the, the, the project. Uh, uh, finally, to implement the approach, uh, this approach, uh, UNFPA in uh, Palestine successfully partnered with, uh, with our UN sister agency, World Food Program, who is acting as service provider for delivery of cash. And this is what's very important that uh, this partnership allow UNFPA to effectively leverage uh, WFP existing platform to assist uh, GBV survivor while including protection and confidentiality of, uh, confidentiality of survivor uh, data. Uh, it, uh, in fact, it was a very fruitful and cooperation between UN, UN agencies. Over to you, Anis. Thank you so much, uh, Sahar, for this key feedback. And um, we now turn to our colleague, uh, Diana, GBV coordinator from UNFPA Colombia. Diana, you have integrated cash as an option of assistance in six departments of Colombia, three in the Northeast near the border with Venezuela, which receives many refugees, migrants, and returnees, as well as in three departments impacted by the internal conflict, Choco, Nariño, and La Guajira. How did you handle the addition of cash assistance in your response program for GBV? And how is the guidance provided useful to you? Over to you, Diana. Thank you, Alice. Hi, everyone. I am Diana from UNFPA Colombia. Uh, thanks for having me here. OK, uh, we had solid experience programming for GBV survivor within GBB case management in Colombia. However, two years ago, it was the first time we started integrating case into all programs. Uh, we have to plan it well on the technical guidance uh, we received when request was practical and useful. Uh, it helpful us revise and update our car protocols and SOP. Uh, e it helped and include elements for our risk analysis and our market and service analysis. 
Uh, we are also now doing some assessment for better integration with sexual and reproductive health service. Uh, in turn, we also contributed the develop the global guidance future with our own experience. Uh, first, of course, we had to decide on our implementation model and delivery mechanisms. We were working with UNFPA contracted GBB case worker and come to the conclusion that after collecting information on the capacity of partner and financial service provider, it could be interesting for us to, direct, to directly contract a large service provider with good coverage in the country and the most women are very familiar with. Uh, with this new provider into the picture, we just had to be careful to take the proper data, data protection measures to ensure the confidentiality of the recipient's personal data during the cash transfer and most of all and their status of GBB survival. When it comes to cash transfer value, what was complete new to us we look at the needs of the GBB survivor to see what we call cover. We calculate a value to cover for the transportation to service, some rent, and some basic needs for the woman and her dependents. However, uh, we did not have much deciding space due to the limit imposed by the government for migrants and refugees. Uh, with a thanks to the guidance is the option for emergency cash transfer, allowing for the cash assistance uh, be this boards and a few hours in case of life saving needs, for instance. Uh, we first started to provide this transfer to GBB survivor and one off. However, we quickly realized that the needs were greater and we were glad to follow in the, guidance, the guidance or making the cash transfer recurrent and over sufficient enough duration when possible. So we went to up transfer, up to transfer for our duration for three months. Uh, over to 2022, we have matured the impact of the cash assistance on the protection needs of GBV survivor in our program of Colombia. Uh, through an evaluation study with the John Hopkins University Center for Humanitarian Health, uh, which includes looking at the additional positive impact of more recurring cash to help GBV survivor recover. And then, uh, we will launch at the end of the March with a webinar in Spanish for the region and so start path. Uh, this is all. Thank you, colleagues, for uh, this invitation. And now uh, over to you, Joanna. Thank you so much, Diana. Uh, so thank you, Sahar, firstly, for telling us about how you assess the needs and came to look at the appropriateness of cash as an option in your GBB case management in Palestine, and also using an implementation model where we partner with another agency just for the delivery, uh, and looking at different scenarios faced by the GBB survivors, and then tailoring your assistance accordingly. Um, this was really interesting. And, and thank you, Diana, for sharing about how you also adjusted some of the design in your program, um, making sure that you were taking into account uh, things like data protection and also changing from the one-off to the recurrent cash and learning how to advocate for that, knowing that it can make such a difference to survivors. And in that case, using another kind of implementation model through a very local uh, service provider that was really accessible to the women you were serving. So I think we're taking away from this um, kind of the usual model that we have for cash at UNFPA, which is that one size does not fit all. We're talking about a survivor-centered approach where it's really individualized um, and we're focused on quality. Um, so thank you so much for telling us about these country implementation applications of the guidance, uh, among other uh, UNFPA country offices and partners who would also like to warmly thank. Um, so we, we wanted to show you here just what's next. So as we mentioned today, the guidance is now available in English and we'll share the links shortly for that. We have the Spanish version coming just in a few days uh, and French and Arabic versions coming very soon. We have an upcoming uh, internal global training 
but we haven't forgotten the demand from so many of our partners through GBV coordination groups and other GBV and cash communities of practice. So we're also working on turning that training into a self-paced e-learning course that will be available to all, and that should be launched by the end of the year. Um, so as we mentioned, there have been really huge demands from the field for this uh, kind of approach, um, including from colleagues in countries where we haven't yet piloted the approach. And that's why we've worked on this guidance and on uh, learning materials that can, can be taken forward even by other colleagues once they have uh, become familiar with the guidance themselves. So hopefully that it will be useful to all of you in your operational work. We think that this resource is really key for helping us to um, more systematically consider cash assistance as a support option in GBB case management uh, for clarifying and improving the way that we use this approach and to equip all of us in furthering our quality programming for GBV survivors. So essentially, we're really looking forward to seeing this as more of a standard option, cash assistance within GBV case management, where feasible and appropriate. And we hope that this guidance will help to really standardize and improve quality for partners who are working on this. Um, so we want to really thank everyone who's been with us today, all the country colleagues, uh, all the, the experts on the line, um, and we will also continue to, um, to, to work with you on this. I'd also like to close now with a big thank you once again to Diane Boulay from USPRM, to all of our panelists and everyone who's participated in the development of this guidance. And thank you to all the participants for attending. So we thank you again for joining us. As we said, we'll keep it short and sweet. We know you have a lot of work to get back to. We're wishing you a good day, good afternoon or good evening. Thank you for tuning in and, and please check out the guidance. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.